Hi, everybody, and welcome to IBTV, where in today's episode, we're going to talk about prediction accuracy. My name is Kelly, and I work here at IB Wave in product marketing. Hey, everyone. My name is Ziad, and I work here with the product management group. Uh, hey, Ziad, just before we get started, I have a quick joke for you. Shoot. So why don't the other electrical units ever invite Ohm to the party? Why don't they, Kelly? Well, he just doesn't know how to conduct himself. That's so funny. Hilarious, right? <laughs> All right, so now that we have that uh, joke out of the way, so Ziad, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're going to be talking about today? Today on IBTV, we're going to be covering prediction accuracy. We're going to look at prediction um, algorithms and then look at uh, building modeling and then look at antenna patterns. Sounds like a lot of wireless fun. It All is. right, so let's get started by jumping into the software. Ziad? Yeah, let's look uh, at, uh, start by looking at our prediction algorithms. Um, here for this example, I've prepared um, two maps, one done with uh, fast ray tracing and one done with uh, cost 231. Uh, and just to give you uh, an example of, um, of the difference in the prediction, let's look at cost 231. Yeah, neat. And come back to fast ray tracing. And we see already just by not analyzing the data uh, further, we see a difference between the two. And is there a way that we can uh, zoom in and maybe take a look at what the comparative yes, difference is yes. between the two? Well, let's enable our uh, probes for, uh, for these two uh, maps. Okay. And what we're seeing here on the screen, let me zoom in, is for the specific pixel where the, the mouse is hovering over, we see two different uh, readings, one for uh, cost 231, the one on the bottom, and then one for the fast rate tracing algorithm. And already over here, we see more than uh, 10 dB difference. Yeah, it's a pretty two. significant difference there. And so if my understanding correct, then the difference between cost 231 and fast rate tracing is really the level of granularity with which it predicts. Um, fast rate tracing takes into consideration reflection and diffraction. Is that, is that right? Uh, yeah, and a little bit more as well. So fast rate tracing takes into consideration the direct line of sight, the, the non-direct line of sight when you have obstructions. It takes into consideration the reflected path on the ceiling, on the wall, on the floor. And as well, it takes into cons consideration effects of wave guiding and also effects of, um, uh, what was I going to say, diffraction. And does it also consider the body loss for high density areas? Or? And for high density areas, uh, there's a there's a uh, adjustment for body loss, which is also defined in the, in the as a parameter. Okay, and so if somebody is running their prediction, do they have a choice when they're running to say whether they want to run it as fast ray tracing, cost two thirty one, and I think there's a couple other yeah, let's uh, take a look algorithms at those. as well, right? Uh, if you are adding a, an output map. You can go to specific, and here you have a selection of what algorithm you want to use. Okay. Uh, this one is fast rate racing. If you want to use 231 or you want to use uh, VPLE. And what is, is the VPLE? One. VPLE is more of a watered-down way of doing prediction. Depending on what uh, venue you are at, if you want uh, much more pre precise prediction or accurate prediction, you want you want to go for fast rate tracing. But if you are doing a, a quick and dirty uh, design and you want to see what kind of uh, prediction uh, maps you got, then you you might choose uh, cost 231 or VPLE. If you don't have a lot of uh, clutter um, materials walls uh, in your um, environment. So simpler designs, you would use more of a VPLE, and the more complex designs like a stadium airports, you would probably want to use something like fast rate tracing Airports, for uh, manufacturing, where you know, you, you're tracking assets, uh, right. where accuracy is very important for you. Um, more and more applications are requiring very accurate coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, then, then fast rate tracing is the way to go. OK. We can show you also a little bit the properties that I was mentioning earlier. If you go into properties for fast rate tracing, uh, you'll see all the parameters for uh, for fast ray tracing, and depending on uh, uh, gamma one is for. Uh, let's go a little bit technical here. Gamma one is for uh, direct line of sight. If you have direct non line of sight, you have gamma three, and then body loss. Uh, it's a delta over gamma one. These are all uh, parameters that you can tune uh, for the individual band, uh, five gigahertz or two point four, or if you're doing public safety over four point nine. And if I remember right, they're also all fraternities. Yes, they are. 
and the Great. mystical university of Wi-Fi design. So yeah, that's a little bit uh, a quick overview of our uh, propagation uh, models. Okay, um, what are we going to look at next? Let's take a look at building modeling. And for that... Exciting. Yeah, let's look at... An example of Wi-Fi design done at an actual stadium somewhere in Germany. Okay. And here we see the heat map. Oh, um, what heat map are we looking at here? I think this is uh, compliancy for capacity. Okay, so it's a pass-fail, red. It's red-green, pass-fail. This is fail. This is a partial design that has been done and still going on. So the capacity is all failed at this point for this particular Except design. for whoever's sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have really They'll good have Wi-Fi, good wifi. <laughs> and everybody won't. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of unhappy uh, customers, but you okay. know, a couple of them will be very happy. Uh, but the point here is to not uh, to show a little bit the accuracy of the design right. uh, of the building modeling and how that would uh, increase your uh, the accuracy of your um, overall design in the end. Um, the purpose of having such a, a modeling is. A, it, it looks good when you're going and showing it to your customer, but B, as well, it will play well with the fast ray tracing that we talked about earlier. Right. If you have a better uh, modeling, then your fast ray tracing uh, will be more accurate, uh, taking into consideration all the walls and um, uh, materials that you have put in into your, into your modeling. Okay, and is there a way that we can take a look at maybe some of the properties or the attenuation of these uh, walls? That yeah, make up definitely. The Let's uh, look at the, the design file for the stadium. Okay. Um, and the, on the design project here, we can uh, see a wall property of this wall here. Okay, so we're looking at concrete, I guess? Uh, we're looking at concrete, exactly. And um, obviously, you can change the color, you can uh, change uh, the length, the, the width of the, of the line, and all of these. Uh, parameters, but what's interesting for us to look at uh, is the transmission loss for different frequencies. Right. So IB Wave allows you to set uh, different uh, frequency loss, um, and what's interesting for us here is 2.4 and 5 gigahertz right. uh, for Wi-Fi, but also you can see that if you're doing other uh, designs like um, uh, Zigbee or IoT or any, any other uh, frequency, then you're covered with IB Wave. Okay. Uh, for these different frequencies and as well. And what's interesting is when you look at the 2.4 versus 5, there's almost uh, twice the attenuation when I look at the 5 gigahertz as the 2.4. Yeah, well definitely, and then that, uh, that plays a big role in, in the accuracy, which is you know, the right. theme of today's show. Makes sense. And this is why we're showing this, uh, this aspect here. Okay, great. Yeah. And I noticed also in the stadium that you're able to model inclined surfaces. So that's also something that's, I think, fairly unique to IB Wave, and it can really make a difference when it comes to prediction accuracy. Yes, definitely. Uh, obviously, if you're doing fast rate tracing and then your, your ray uh, is bouncing off uh, different surfaces, if you have the right angle for that, then you're going to get a better result in, the, in your predictive modeling. Right. And that's one of the reasons that brought IB Wave to support inclined surfaces. Okay, makes sense. Is there anything else you want to show everyone uh, about the I think modeling? that covers the, the basics of modeling with IB Wave and why, uh, why it's important when you're going for accuracy in your design to, to use a tool that allows you to, um, to represent your venue in a very faithful way. Actually, one question, because I get mm -hmm. this question quite a bit when I'm going to shows and, and whatnot, is do you absolutely need the AutoCAD file in order to model something in IB Wave? You don't need the uh, AutoCAD file. Uh, if you have a, an AutoCAD file, obviously there are different challenges. Usually right. the AutoCAD file uh, is very uh, cluttered, very, um, mm -hmm. uh, there are many layers that you don't need and you have to sift through them and to, to find the ones that you, uh, you need to model for your RF impact. Right. Uh, it's a balance for different projects. If you have a clean AutoCAD file, obviously you're gonna save time, but IB Wave as well allows you to um, to model from scratch uh, and do, for example, this uh, this building here was modeled from from scratch. And one of the features I actually learned about, I didn't know IB Wave Wi-Fi had when I was at the conference and Jamel was doing his workshop, is when you're importing um, AutoCADs, a lot of times the issue is having a double wall. Yeah. But we actually have the ability to put in a tolerance level where it will consider two walls as one if you put in a particular that's. Yeah, that we uh, obviously are, are con constantly improving the import from, from AutoCAD uh, and right. 
but you always have to be careful if you really want to make sure that your your uh, your modeling is good. You always have to be careful. Your end product is uh, is what you expect. So the better the AutoCAD, the better your modeling, and Obviously. the better your design. Obviously, makes sense. So what are we going to look at next? Next, I think on the list is uh, the antenna contour, and uh, let me bring up. Okay, and if. Uh, I remember correctly, this is some more 3D stuff. We're going to look at the 3D, 3D stuff, antenna yeah. patterns. And there it is. So what we're looking at is a, is a MIMO antenna, uh, a directional antenna. And you might think that um, it's, it's trivial to, to have an antenna pattern uh, model from 2D uh, or from 3D. You might think the difference is not that, uh, that important, but Let's look at the difference between a 2D rendering, uh, a, a rendering in 3D from a 2D uh, input uh, file versus uh, rendering 3D from a 3D input file. And obviously for uh, what's obvious right away is that for the back lobe and the side lobe, um, the, the difference is, is huge in terms of, uh, oh, yeah. in terms of uh, propagation. Right. That, that's one of the things that uh, we, uh, we got uh, requested to do by some of our um, OAM partners um, and uh, some of our customers, more, more advanced customers. They recognized that whenever they, they had the directional antennas and they installed them on site and they modeled them from a 2D um, antenna counter um, file, they went to do their validation survey and, and they were finding some results that were not matching what they were seeing from the prediction modeling. and then. Pushing the envelope further, you know, we realized that you, you need you need to account for this uh, back lobe and side lobe with the three D better accurate modeling of your antenna pattern. Nice. And uh, this is an example of uh, why it's it's better to have a three D antenna pattern. Yeah. So, do we have anything else we're going to look at today, Ziad, or was that everything that you wanted to show? Well, that's our show for today. Obviously, it was very uh, high level. We covered uh, the accuracy in in, uh, in design. We saw how um, uh, the prediction algorithm uh, and our antenna patterns, as well as the building modeling, they all work together to give you a better uh, prediction uh, result in the end. And, and having that, when you go on site after the installation, your result was, is going to be very accurate, very close to your prediction design, minimizing your uh, your tuning, fine tuning, rough tuning of, of your uh, network after you install it. Nice. Okay, great. Well, thanks for walking me and everybody watching. Um, through all of that in Ivy Wave Wi-Fi. Uh, thank you to everyone for tuning in and watching our IBT ep episode on prediction accuracy. And I guess if there's one final thought that we want to leave you with today, it is that life, life is, is too, too short, short for, for bad, bad wireless. wireless. See, See you next, you next time. time.